Well, hey there, my name is Kyle Papineau. I'm the pastor of Legacy Church, and I want to welcome you to our online worship experience. Thanks for being here with us today. Man, we are so excited about what God has been doing in and through this COVID-19 season. And one of the things that he put on my heart uh, about two years ago was to put together a sermon series based on anxiety, trying to figure out what does the church need to do to address this problem. And so in my study, I drew on a couple of people's wisdom, and you're actually seeing them here with me today. And so I thought it'd be really cool if we had just a discussion about uh, some of the questions that you guys have, have submitted to us, um, which by the way, I want to extend an invitation. If you have a question that you would like to, uh, to have discussed this morning, please shoot us a text. Um, we're going to be sending text to 714-338-338. 6248. I'll give that number out again in a few minutes. We have um, another chance to, but I want to introduce to you just a couple of people that have been influential, not just in my life, but in my spiritual life. Um, To my left is my sister, Chelsea. She has been my best friend since, well, she was born. I was born first, so (laughs) let's keep that straight. (laughs) Uh, And then we have Bree Wood. Um, she and her husband, Andrew, have just been absolutely influential people in our, in our lives and in our walks with Christ. And then Bill and Christy Galtier, man, so excited to have you guys. These are friends that have spoken into Brittany and I's lives so many times. And we're just so grateful for each of you and the, the influence that you've had in our own lives. Um, I'd love it if we just open up with a word of prayer real quick. So Father, I pray that you would speak. You know what you need to be said, and so... Um, It is our heart that you be heard. I pray that you would open up our ears to hear and uh, get us, the panelists, out of the way of what you're doing so that you can be seen more clearly. We love you, we praise you, and we give thanks ahead of time for what you're already going to do in this session. We love you. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Hey, really quick, again, if you are going to submit a question Um, You can send us a message on Facebook, a DM on Instagram, or send a text to 714-338-6248. That'd be awesome. Um, Hey, real quick, why don't you guys just give me um, a quick snapshot of of who you are and what you guys actually do. Chelsea, you want to start us off? Sure. Um, My name is Chelsea Fontaine. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. And I work in private practice with um, a lot of clients that have anxiety and depression. Those are uh, two of my specialties. Um, Yeah, so I work in Tustin and and love what I do. That's awesome, awesome. Bree. Yeah, my name is Bree Wood. I'm an associate marriage and family therapist at the Center for Individual and Family Therapy. So we are one of the largest Christian counseling centers in Orange County. We have five locations and over 75 therapists on staff. Um, So there's a lot of good training there, and um, I work with all kinds of clients, kids, couples, individuals with a variety of issues. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. Bill and Christy. We're Bill and Christy Galtier. We're doctors of psychology, and we have founded a ministry called Soul Shepherding, and I'll let you tell them a little bit about Soul Shepherding. What we're all about is helping you to thrive with Jesus in your life, your relationships, your work, whatever you're doing, and uh, anxiety plays a big part of that. We all have stress in our life, particularly if you're, you're in ministry, uh, you're a parent, whatever your role of serving God is, there's stress in that, and so we get into the space of soul care and spiritual formation for people. So good, so good, and so needed. What, what you guys are all doing is so needed, um, and I know the church hasn't championed you uh, to the degree that you uh, deserve it, and so I, I do want to take a second and just say thank you for what you guys do. Um, it's not auxiliary. Um, it's mainline. And so we, we appreciate what you guys do. Um, I just want to open this question up maybe to anybody who wants to go first. Um, what's an example of how you've struggled with anxiety in your own life? Anybody want to start us off there? Well, I'll jump in. So uh, a number of years ago, I was giving a keynote talk to a group of people who were in 12-step recovery, uh, Christian recovery from drug addiction and uh, other things, and had about 2,000 people in the audience, and I'm up there on the stage, and I'm having an anxiety attack, mm-hmm. and my, my chest is just, heart is just pumping out of my, my uh, shirt, and I'm feeling sweaty, and the room's kind of closing in on me, and my mind and thoughts are getting cloudy, and I'm like short of breath and I'm like 
what am I even talking about here? And why am I here? And there's all these people and I, I'm not, I haven't done this long enough. I'm not like credible enough. And I'm just here because I'm filling in for my, my mentor who couldn't come and I'm going to bomb this thing. <laughs> and it, it didn't, I actually didn't give my best. And so then it was, you know, it was all that self-consciousness and the constriction that anxiety can bring. And so it was really hard. I was, I was being self-critical and, uh, I learned a lot from that. I learned a lot from that. I think the main thing I learned is to lean on, on Jesus and uh, get in his easy yoke. And before, whenever I, I speak or, or really do anything, to just say, hey, Jesus, you're, you're the lead, and I'm, I'm following you, and to participate from there. Wow. What a lesson. 33 years ago, we were college pastors at a large mega church, and we were, had been married a year, and we were going to school full time, getting our doctorates in psychology. And I could not handle all the pressure. And so we had to go in to our bosses at the church and resign from being youth pastors. And that morning, I was so anxious, I was vomiting. Yeah. And because I felt like I'd failed, yeah. and I felt like I'd failed God even, you know, yeah. in that I couldn't handle continuing to be the pastor that I had wanted to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Anybody else have anything they want to share? Um, anxiety in my life has more looked like performance mm -hmm. and worrying about constantly what other people think. Um, and that affects the way that you can be truly present with people. Um, and so one thing that has helped me through that is realizing that my identity is in Christ, not in how I look, what I do, um, how well I do it. Um, it is, it's just Christ. Yeah. And that is a great relief. Awesome. So good. You have anything you want to share? Yeah, I do. Um, so something I did want to bring up today is there's so many different kinds of anxiety, right? We can have racing thoughts. We can have visceral reactions. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. And so um, a big thing for me has actually been really feeling anxiety in my body and trying to work through that. And breath pairs have actually been really helpful to me in that the last couple years. Um, but oftentimes when we don't have somebody to help us give language to what we're experiencing, we don't have someone to help us kind of sit with that and be with us in it, um, it does manifest even physically. And so that's been a big part of my story is working through that part. Yeah. And how do you? Uh, breath prayers are great. Um, finding someone to talk with about it when I'm really feeling trapped in that inside of me, being able to sit with someone who's loving and encouraging and, yeah. and present. Yeah. Yeah. Bill and Chelsea, I, I probably find myself in between the two of you fairly regularly, uh, feeling either inadequate to be in front of people or too much performance based off of how I look and, and what I've prepared to do. What are some ways that you guys have found to, to, um, you, I believe you said it, step into Jesus' yoke. How, how have you done that? Well, a term that we use for that is abandoning outcomes to God. So a lot of what makes for anxiety is trying to control things. So we say that anxiety is like a control disease. We're mm -hmm. trying to control what people think about us, sure. like, like you were saying, Chelsea. We're trying to control how, how we feel emotionally or even in our body, like Brianna was saying. We're trying to control our, our performance is a, is a big thing that we've already talked about. And so when we can let go of control to the Lord by uh, in, in prayer, dedicating what we're doing to him, put, putting it on Jesus' shoulders, I think that's really uh, central to what the easy yoke means, where we're yeah. like that younger ox getting into the, the yoke with the mature ox. That's Jesus. Sure. And now we're going we're gonna to pull the plow across the field together and let, letting Jesus be that lead. And we all have that. As Christians, I think we all have that idea and that, that heart that we want to right, do that. Right. But it's just some of the, the practices and, and habits around actually learning to do that in a situation. Sure. I, I love that picture of, of the two um, oxen running side by side and, and getting to learn from, from the older, wiser, more experienced ox. What about for you? Um, for me, it's come in the form of... Um, not operating out of shame and not operating out of my own pride, um, but realizing the areas where Jesus has redeemed me mm -hmm. uh, and, and constantly falling back on that. And, and ha I have to remind myself daily that I'm not the general manager of the world um, <laughs> and that um, I, I don't have to hold shame. 
I don't have to hold that because Jesus held that and he pinned it to the cross and it's yeah. done. Yeah. Um, it's easy to slip back into. And so reminding myself of the gospel is what right. really helps. So cool. So speaking of that, um, I'm curious to hear, Brie, your, your opinion. What, what does the church need to hear about anxiety? How, like in your experience, what does the church need to be doing to help people through this? Yeah, and and this is a really great question. I'm married to a pastor, and so (laughs) I tend to function in both of these worlds as a therapist and also as a pastor's wife and kind of a pastor in my own right. Um, And so something I was kind of processing and preparing for this is I think a lot of people feel a lot of shame from the church when it comes to anxiety. Yeah, Um, They're not sure how the church sees them, and so we certainly don't want to shame people to work through the hard things in their lives. Um, We also don't necessarily need to just teach them because language and those sorts of things are really helpful in education. Um, But I think people really need us to just be with them. And I think the church needs to just be with um, their members as they're struggling through things. I think the best way to heal people is to love them through it and be present. Um, And so I I think uh, for leadership, um, that's a huge issue is, you know, making sure they have that space yeah. mm-hmm. um, to be held and known in that, but then also to, to do that for their members as well. So good. Yeah. So good. Christy, I'm curious to hear your point of view on this as well. Yeah, I appreciate you asking because I'm thinking about how I was talking with a pastor's wife and she was talking to me about anxiety that she was having yeah. and she had been in denial of it. And she actually, as she was talking to me, she said, I'm in denial of anxiety as I've been listening to you teach this morning because I have believed that to be anxious is a sin. Yeah. And she says, I actually even have books on my shelf that say anxiety is a sin. Right. The right. Bible says, do not be anxious. Yeah. So how, how come you're talking to me about getting in touch with my, ang- my anxiety and being honest with myself and with God and others about my anxiety when that's sinful. It's it's just like you're telling me to sin. Mm -hmm. And so she had a biblical blunder. She had a misinterpretation of scripture there. Mm -hmm. She was hearing Paul's words in Philippians 4, you know, do not be anxious for anything, you know, instead pray about everything and don't forget to thank God for his answers. And so she was thinking, okay, I need to not feel anxiety. I just need to always be praying and giving thanks and being positive. Right, right. And the problem with that is that left her with the option of denying and repressing her emotion. And as she did that, she got sicker and sicker and Hmm. sicker because the anxiety was coming out of very unhealthy ways, getting channeled into anger that was very hurtful to people in her body, making her physically sick. Right. And so I had the opportunity to help her understand what Paul's really saying there is when you are anxious, Hmm. tell the Lord how you feel. Yeah. Bring it to the Lord. Like, like first Peter five, seven, cast your cares on the Lord knowing he cares for you. He, he knows what you feel and we can take courage from the psalmist and pray emotionally honest prayers Yeah. and cry out to the Lord. And as we do, and as we get in touch with that and we hand it over to the Lord, we're able to then breathe in and receive his peace. And that's what that scripture goes on to say. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and might. So So I think as a church helps people understand that this is not something that scripture is shaming you for, that it's not a sin, and that the Lord really asks us to be emotionally honest with him. And that's a important part of prayer is that conversation. Sure. And in, in your guys's wisdom, do you think that is what brings healing or growth? Yes, absolutely. Being able to pay attention to what it is that you're feeling, name it. Um, if, if you're having trouble with that, asking somebody who will let you process that out loud and validate what you're feeling and help you name it. If you don't know what it is, um, doing research, like, you know, some of you have mentioned, and, and we provide a lot of articles on our website because we know that's helpful to people to learn and to understand what's going on with me and to get those names for what they're feeling and have an ambassador of Christ who actually can be there for you so good. and share his love, his empathy, his care, his wisdom, his truth, and pray for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So you touched on it, and I actually want to dive in because there's been, um, earlier this week, we asked some of our people to submit questions, which by the way, if you are watching and you do have a question, I want to give you that number one more time. It's 714-338-6248. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and then we're also watching the chat. 
Um, but one of the questions that got submitted was, how do we discern between anxiety as a sin issue and anxiety as a health issue? Help me understand the difference there. Well, I would say that, that anxiety is never a sin issue, but it can lead to sin. So uh, Psalm 139 is a great example. At the end of that Psalm, verses 23 to 24, uh, David says, you know, search me and know me, O God. Mm -hmm. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts mm -hmm. and see if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So he puts anxious thoughts and offensive way side by side they're, they're differentiated, but they're related. Anxiety can lead to sin sure. because when we're repressing our anxiety, what anxiety means, because anxiety is a secondary emotion, what it means is we've been repressing stress, frustration, anger, feelings of shame, grief, sadness, fear. Primary emotions like that are being repressed yep. or we're so overloaded with the stress in our life that it's just getting into our body. And so that, that's not healthy for us. It's not a sin. It's a brokenness. It's a woundedness. It's, it's a pain. It's a struggle. It's a, it's a, a sensitivity and, and a problem in a relationship. But where it becomes a sin is when we got all that stuff repressed in us, we're more vulnerable to temptation. We're more vulnerable to act in ways that are unloving to God and to other people. So that differentiation is real important because the, the, the superficial understanding of all the fear not scriptures in the Bible and all the, you know, do not be anxious stuff is, is, turns into sound bites and teachings that we get that are like, well, you know, just have faith or just be strong or sure, just sure. have courage. And it's like, well, that's like half true. But the other half of it is, well, well courage, that's something you, you get from the Lord or from a, a mentor or a strong friend in the fear, and you get it by receiving empathy, by right. the, that loving presence of someone that's with you validating your, your experience. Right. So one of the things going into this entire sermon series, I shared it with our congregation um, early on in this thing, was I did not want to preach the Philippians 4 passage that you referenced <laughs> because I didn't want to just be that guy that said, don't, don't do this, right? I didn't want to become a soundbite. I didn't want it to become uh, another pastor shaming somebody for something that could be shame-based already. You know what I mean? Like that's something that I've struggled with in my own life. And so this is actually something that the church has mislabeled or, or misshamed people for. Um, and I'm curious, like, how, how do we stop doing that? How do we be that emotionally uh, supportive person? Um, you guys have anything that you want to add to that? Well, I think it, it less than, or different than the church, you know, using it as, as shame. I think it's just like they were mentioning, it's just a misunderstanding of how it's lined out in the Bible. And there is, there is shame because when we feel like we sin, that is separation from God. Mm -hmm. And so of course we feel shame about that. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to, it's not sin. It's not leading directly to sin. Um, one of the ways that, um, I found it helpful in my life and in the life of a lot of the clients that I've worked with is getting in a healthy community um, of people who understand, maybe not on a, an experiential level, but getting with people who understand. Um, and for, for the church, being understanding. It doesn't yeah. mean you have to have struggled with anxiety. I'm not somebody who struggled with a whole lot of anxiety, but I know what it's like to struggle with that. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes out different in different people, sure. but being, just being rather than doing, mm -hmm. um, is, is what Jesus modeled. Mm -hmm. he, he says in Mark, um, when they say, Jesus, where are you staying? Where are you staying tonight? He says, come with me. Mm -hmm. he, doesn't, he doesn't tell them the end point. He doesn't tell them where. He just says, be with me. Mm -hmm. So his invitation is always to presence. And so I think the more that we can be present with people, the more helpful we're going to be. And we can speak truth from that perspective. So good. So good. Yeah, and, and as the church, how are, we, how are we helping people encounter the Jesus and the God that wants to know our anxiety, right? That wants to sit with us and know us in that and hold us in that. Um, because I think some of the shame comes up from our God image. Who do we think God is and how does yeah. he perceive us? Um, and so really helping people explore that, that part of Jesus that's so good and so compassionate. How would you help draw attention to that, that Jesus? I mean, part of that is teaching, and part of that's experiential, being Jesus to them in that way, mm -hmm. um, leaning into his strength and his compassion inside of yourself, and, and being yeah. able to embody that is really important. 
but also teaching and reiterating, and Bill and Chris, you're so good at this, um, just reiterating the goodness of God in that and how much he wants to commune with you yeah. is really important. Yeah. So one of the other questions that came up kind of under this same topic was, um, why does God allow anxiety? Uh, and why doesn't he heal everyone from it? Mm-hmm. And so I, I have some personal thoughts on this, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, well, I, you know, I've been thinking about that just as we've been talking right here, because anxiety actually for me can be really a helpful identifier of where I'm tempted mm-hmm. to sin. And so one example of that would be, and, and you've talked about this, Chelsea, the temptation to worry about what other people will think about me mm-hmm. will cause me anxiety. Mm-hmm. And that's a temptation for me to try to secure myself and build my identity mm-hmm. around what other people think instead of around what God thinks. That's good. Mm-hmm. So anxiety actually will alert me to that and give me an opportunity to say, where am I looking for sure. my identity? And it's corrective for me to understand that. Or anxiety can manifest around trying to get what I think I'm going to need and worrying about what I have or don't have. Uh, Money would be an example where for a lot of people, a lot of anxiety centered on money. Mm -hmm. Well, where am I trusting the Lord here again? Am I trusting my own ability to get what I need or to save and protect what I have? Or am I looking to the Lord and trusting His resources, His provision, Him to give me the daily bread? And then my anxiety can also times can be around what I do. Am I doing a good job? Am I, am I achieving enough? Am I meeting expectations? Yeah. Am I c- making an impact? And there again, it can wake me up to, well, where am I looking for my joy, for my sense of life? Is it in what I do and what I accomplish and what I achieve? Or is it in the Lord? Is it enough for me? Do I really believe He loves me for who I am and right. not what I do? Who He created you to be, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, if God, you know, if God just healed our anxiety, there, there would be no discipleship to Jesus. There would be no spiritual growth processes. There, there'd be no humanity as we know it because to feel anxious is just part of being human because we all have stress in our lives. Stress isn't just bad stuff. It's just, mm-hmm. it's changes, it's challenges, sure. it's, as well as the bad stuff. And we can't help but internalize some of that and have some anxious feelings and none of us except Jesus are like perfectly attuned to God and perfectly healthy Mm -hmm. so we're going to repress some of our sadness and anger and fear and we're going to have some anxiety and even Jesus felt anxious I mean in the Garden of Gethsemane he he was anxious yeah and so the the key and in the the wisdom of scriptures and the key with with interpreting scripture as we know, but we need to remind ourselves is we never want to like take one scripture, <laughs> Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious and like put a period there. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. God's word. Yeah. It's like, okay, wait a minute. Let's look at the whole context here in Philippians. Let's look at the, the context of the scripture and let's, okay, how is this the same thing sure. is what Paul, is what David is saying in the Psalms because they're the same. And so you let scripture interpret scripture. Right, right. And so when we take that whole swath, we say, okay, wait a minute. We got Psalms of lament and we got prayers of lament all through the scripture yeah. that are emotionally honest like Christy was saying. And so God wants to heal us, but as it relates to like personality and relationships and emotions, healing is a process, mm-hmm. almost always, because that relates to our sanctification and our, our growth right, in Christ. Right. Mm-hmm. So that there's, there's steps that are involved, the, the kinds of things that we're talking about, studying the scripture and, and learning and being in safe relationships where there's empathy and practicing spiritual disciplines like breath prayers and yeah. being in a small group where we're taking our pastor's sermon, we're applying it into our life and we're, we're praying for each other. All these things right. over time work together. And, and if we do it in, in a biblical way, we will be less and less anxious. Yeah. Discipleship to Jesus will cure anxiety. Now, some anxiety is like very debilitating and embodied and so medication is needed. There's other things to talk about there, but in most cases with internalized stress and these things that we're talking about, an emotionally honest relationship with the Lord in the context of the body of Christ, it will increasingly set us free to live in God's peace. Wow. Wow. So good. My goodness, you could take that one thing and turn it into a million different conversations. But I, I, I loved, I love that you guys are continually drawing the, um, the attention to community, to discipleship with Jesus, to prayer. To, I like those are all spiritual disciplines, mm-hmm. and and so I'm I'm loving what I'm hearing because so many times we think that we just have to stop being anxious. I mean that was that was one of the 
people who text me said just, well, we could just stop doing this. And it's like, man, if you can, uh, good for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> praise God for that. But what about those of us who can't? Um, and so the next question would be, what in your experience, and all of you have such vastly different experiences in this topic, what are some of the most common contributors to anxiety that you guys have found? Christy, let's start with you. Yeah, one of them is really internalizing a lot of stress. You know, we say we're stressed out, but really anxiety is being stressed in. We're internalizing, <laughs> we're picking it up in our world. I mean, you turn on the news, you listen to the, you're absorbing yeah. anxiety. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you're with an anxious person who's displaying anxiety and they don't even know it and they're repressing it, you can sense it, you're absorbing their anxiety. Yeah. So that's one of the things I think that often we're not paying attention to is that our, we live around, in, you know, right now COVID-19 is producing a lot of anxiety for people. Yeah. So one of the things that helps me with that and really to pay attention to that is what, get concrete with it. What is it that I'm feeling anxious about right mm -hmm. now? Okay, if that were to happen, what would I be afraid of? And then I'll write that down, name that, look at that, talk to the Lord about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that were to happen, what would I be afraid of? And I'll go down and I'll name that. And I'll just keep going till I, I'm kind of taking it apart to understand all these things. It's the layers uh, of the onion. Yes. Yeah. So that I can understand, so I can bring it all out into the open before right. the Lord. It's, it's a confession, really. It's a form of confession in a way. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily confessing sin, but I'm confessing emotion. I'm confessing my experience. And as I do that, I bring it into the light of God's love. I'm able to see it through his eyes. And sure. I'm able to hear his voice speak to me about it. So wait, you're employing scripture in this? Mm -hmm. You're saying yeah. what the psalmist said, that mm -hmm. if you take your anxious thoughts before God, he yes. can help you with that. That's absolutely true. Wow. Yes. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So example, I had people sending me all these videos about end time stuff. Mm -hmm. And what does this mean for end time? Right, right, and right. It, you know, and um, so-and-so is putting chips and vaccines for people and tracking <laughs> them and all this kind of thing. You better not get that vaccine. And you know, all, and like I'm absorbing all this anxiety that people were coming at me with all this stuff and sending me all this, these articles and videos and all that. And I was kind of like talking to the Lord about it. And I was saying, this is kind of like making me anxious because I yeah. don't really understand exactly right. all of this stuff. And talking to the Lord about it, and I felt like the Lord just said to me, Christy, you're my sheep, you hear my voice. Mm. Just listen to me. You know, don't try to figure all this out, you know, what they're sending you. Listen to me. You hear my voice. I'll, I'm with you. I'll guide you. So good. Anxiety just goes down. It's crazy how the presence of the Lord reduces anxiety like that. I mean, I love that you guys are drawing a distinction that it can be a, a warning sign or, or a uh, something that points to a sin in your life or something that could potentially turn into a sin. But I love that the focus here is, is let's give it to God. Let's spend time with him. Let's hear his voice. My fear is, though, that people aren't taking it to God. They're, they're internalizing it. They're staying there with it and then asking God to take it away. They're not inviting him into it. Yes, and then often what we do is sometimes we'll turn to a substance to try to right. you know, numb the stress or right. unhealthy habits or numbing out, different things like mm -hmm. that that are, can lead to sin. Sure. So one of the things that we have said through this entire uh, sermon series has been Jesus is completely comfortable sitting with you in your anxiety. But the point of him sitting with you is not that he gets comfortable in it. It's that you get comfortable enough with him for him to lead you out of it. Um, and maybe that's not, uh, we've had conversations even in our living room about uh, health versus growth. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what is complete healing, uh, maybe our, our initial thought of divine healing, just it being gone mm -hmm. versus growth. And I think there's something to be said about long-term growth where we're, we're employing disciplines in our lives, like being a part of community, like silence, and actually hearing the voice of God so that when we go through something the next time, we don't have to pray again for divine healing. We actually have an arsenal of things that we've learned that we can employ into this current situation. Well, and that's not different from divine healing, in my personal opinion, because it's fair. It's God uses so many varieties of ways to heal somebody. Yeah. And, and the way that I think about it is like, if someone were to have cancer, we pray for healing, we pray for healing. Um, and 
sometimes healing comes through God touching them, doing a miracle, mm -hmm. taking cancer out of their body, and they get completely marked as in remission. And that is fantastic. It's no less of a healing for somebody to go to a doctor, get chemo, right. heal, right. and be in remission. It's also a form of healing um, for the believer, for God to say, no, I want you home. Yeah. And so healing, looking at healing in different perspectives rather than just, it's, a, it's gone away, it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I like to focus on growth um, because healing to me tends to have an end point. Mm -hmm. And yes, we can be healthier, but I, I like to view it as a process, as a growth, because yeah. things that grow don't stop growing. Things that God, things that God created don't stop growing. Mm -hmm. um, if, unless, we, unless we stunt them. Sure, it's so, a proof of life. Yeah, yeah, healthy things grow. So um, I, I like to view it more as, as a growth process rather than as a cut and dry, yeah, God's gonna take it away. And he might. And that's wonderful, and that's one form of healing. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you saying that, Chelsea, because I would say we all are actually wounded healers. Mm -hmm. We all mm. have experienced mm -hmm. some anxiety, and mm -hmm. out of that, we have an empathy for people who have anxiety, and out of our own growth in this area, we are able to actually bring healing yeah. to others. Yeah. yeah, so good. Anybody else? Well, something you said, Kyle, uh, it's worth coming back to. You, you were saying how you're articulating that what we're saying here in this conversation is that one of the things is that anxiety is like a warning s signal, mm -hmm. like that something needs attention. And then you were, you were drawing out the distinction between anxiety and sin. And so anxiety can warn us that we're on a path or of temptation that could lead to sin. I just want to add to that, that that anxiety is a signal that I've got an unmet need. Anxiety is a signal that there's a, a, a wound or a hurt that needs uh, an emotional healing growth process. Put yeah. those healing growth words together there. <laughs> and so that's a key thing that, that we do when we're with somebody that's anxious. So you, if you're struggling with fear about COVID-19, you don't, you don't want to get sick, you've got a, a, an older parent or grandparent, or you've got a, a, a vulnerable uh, a person in your family uh, or you're, you're someone that's on the front lines in the grocery store, like my, my brothers, and you're around people that are, are sick, or you're in healthcare, and that, that's a, like a real fear that yeah. you would have, a real anxiety. We've got another family member who has cystic fibrosis, and, mm -hmm. and his, his uh, wife is in the medical profession, and so that's like not a good combination. So she's around, potentially around people with COVID-19, and if he gets exposed to it, how's he gonna even survive that? Because sure. he's, he's compromised. And so, it's like these are realistic fears and anxieties that we would have, and so what we need is someone that will enter into that with us and see that there, there's, there's real emotion there, there's real vulnerability, and there's a, there's a need for comfort. And so that, that's what Jesus does perfectly. That's, that's the incarnation, that, that's the cross. He comes to us, and, you know, and I'm with you. And that, that presence, like you were saying, Chelsea, that, that presence of God with us is what brings that, comfortable, that comfort. I, I would say that Jesus is comfortable with us in our discomfort, and that then enables us to take on his comfort, like, like you were saying earlier, Kyle. So I think getting at the, the real needs that we have for, for comfort, for, for courage, for, for companionship, that's what helps us to overcome the fear and the anxiety. Yeah. So we've obviously touched on COVID-19 quite a bit. So let me just ask a, a random question that didn't get submitted, but this is just my question. Is COVID-19 a, a um, anxiety inducing situation on its own, or is it releasing underlying anxiety? I think both. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes and yes. Definitely both. We all have underlying anxiety that's being triggered, and that can be a real cause of anxiety. Sure. Triggers. There are things that trigger our anxiety. We have one term for that would be emotional allergies to things. Hmm. And some of us respond more with anger. Yeah. And some of us respond more with fear. Sure. Some of us respond more with shame or, you know, so there are different ways of responding to those triggers. But I think that COVID is triggering a lot of anxiety and a lot of loss for people. And that loss is another trigger of anxiety because we then fear more loss. So it's kind of a spiral is what you're it saying. It can be. 
Hey, stop the spiral. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Chelsea and I had a conversation, I don't know, about a month or so ago, um, specifically about the spiral. And that's where we, like that conversation, I don't know if you know this, named our series Stop the Spiral because of that. Because I find in my own personal life, and I want to just open up, um, you know, we, we joke about being on someone's couch uh, but have you guys ever been on a couch when there's four other people on the other <laughs> side of the room? So I don't do anything the easy way. Um, my tendency is when I have, when I feel anxiety and I have up until this, the study of this series called it stress. Um, I have, I have called it different situations that are difficult to get through. I haven't had language for it. My tendency is to get trapped into a spiral that if this, then this, because that's the way my mind works. And so I'm curious, what are some practical ways that I can deal with this? And, and, and I want all of you guys to chime in on this, but we were talking off camera about my um, frustration and my tension and, and now what I'm knowing as anxiety before launch day, where I physically had to lay down because I thought my heart was going to explode in my chest. I, I didn't feel choked. Um, and we were talking about this even this last week that I've said, oh, I never felt I never felt choked out or, or um, hard to breathe. And she goes, well, you're awake, but you've been complaining of bad dreams for a long time. And so I'm actually finding that I'm processing some of my own anxiety while I sleep. Um, and so I'm curious, do you guys have some things that I can just put into practice in my in my personal life right now um, that would help me? Well, the first thing is what you just did, and we've talked about it, but it's, it's the most important, and that's, that's to name the feeling mm -hmm. and, and to get help with that because that's not really a self-help process primarily. Sure. It's primarily a relational process, and, and the perfect help, of course, is in God, but we need the body of Christ. We need love one another relationships, and mm -hmm. so when someone is with us who can feel our feelings even better than we can, and can help us put words to that. That's what enables us to do it. Mm -hmm. we, we absorb that, we internalize that empathy, and then we can come to some self-awareness and self-naming, self-articulation that's, that's really helpful. Yeah, so Kyle, your experience there of your heart pounding and having to lay down, I mean, that, that's frightening. Mm -hmm. That feels out of control. That feels overwhelming for you. And so, you know, to feel the pain of that and the fear of that, mm -hmm. and then is that gonna happen again to me? And how often is gonna, that gonna happen? Or to be having nightmares and recognizing these are symptoms of anxiety. Mm -hmm. I need to do something about that. Sometimes that can actually tempt us to even be anxious about our anxiety. <laughs> <Getting> anxious <laughs> and anxious, which isn't, isn't helpful. Sure. But I, I love your honesty with that, and that's, that's a huge step. Our own growing in our mm. own awareness and honesty is hugely curative in and of itself. And then also, like you said, the dreams. So having those anxious dreams also can be warning lights, like Bill was saying to us, of, oh, there is emotions and anxiety that I'm having that I'm not sure. processing. So our unconscious in our dreams is trying to process all that. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's coming out that way in the nightmares. Yeah. And so devoting some time of your awake time to actually partnering with your unconscious, bringing mm -hmm. into the mm -hmm. consciousness, listening to what you're feeling. One of the things that's helped me with this is scripture memory. I've memorized Psalm 131, and that's been a great psalm for me to, wherever I am, pray through. Yeah. Because it starts out with, you know, Yahweh, my heart has no lofty ambitions, my eyes do not look too high. Mm. I am not concerned with great affairs or marvels beyond my scope. And then yeah. as soon as I say that, I say, but I am. <laughs> and I start to just confess yeah. them all. All yeah, the marvels good. beyond my scope, I'm concerned with all the lofty ideas I have, yeah. all, you know, just start getting in touch and start naming them and confessing them. Yeah. And then it says, enough for me to keep my soul tranquil and quiet, hmm. like a child in its mother's arms, like a child that's just been fed. And so I'll picture myself, you know, I, I have three kids and a grandbaby and I've nurtured them and I'll picture myself as that baby in Abba's arms holding me, nurturing his love and adoration for me, like I have for these babies. When I've fed these babies and they just fall limp in trust, <laughs> I get myself to that way with my Abba Father. Mm, limp good. and trusting him, reoriented again in his goodness, his love for me, the safety of his protection. And then the scripture goes on to say, it, it says Israel, but I put my name in there, Christy. Right. Rely on Yahweh now and mm. for always. 
And I'll just continue to say those words over and over again and breathing in deep and slow as I pray those words over and over until my body begins to believe them. Until all of my mm -hmm. reality becomes that. So good. And so you can retrain yourself and retrain your body from these anxiety responses yeah. into these responses of trusting. I think uh, a lot of times we read the Bible as a spectator mm -hmm. instead of as a letter to us. Mm -hmm. And so we tend to see things and think that's nice for them mm -hmm. instead of putting our name in where Israel's name is. Instead of putting, uh, I think we, we sometimes feel like ah, we don't have words to pray. And so instead of borrowing David's prayers, we, we try to make our own, but then we feel inadequate and we feel like uh, this isn't really helping. And it just continues the spiral where really the Bible was written for us to put our name in some of these places. And, and I love that you guys have both mentioned Psalms. I, I, I love the Psalms. And, and in my own personal devotional life, they're a huge part of my conversations with the Lord. Because it's not like that's all I pray, but it's really a good jumping off point. Um, so we did just get a text from uh, someone that kind of ties into this. And uh, the question is, why do we tend to spiral? How long can it last? But I want to deal with this last part. Why isn't our default to turn to God? Uh, in an affirmative sense, why is it or why is it not? Why isn't? Why isn't it? Okay, so yeah. why, why is it not our default? Okay, so that's a question of habit. And we, we don't probably talk enough about habits in right. our, our Christian right. teaching. and We don't like the word discipline in the faith. Yeah, it's well, funny. and sometimes we think habit is like not authentic or not from the heart. Right. Right. Yeah, rote, mechanical or something. But we can't, we can't drive a car without habits, or at least not safely. Yeah. And so habits are an important. We can't think about all the things we need to think about to be a good disciple of Jesus <laughs> and to be a loving person. Sure. So we need some habits that, that get us to, to pray to be emotionally honest with a friend, to, to read and meditate on scripture. And so uh, we want the peace of Christ to be our default, where we keep, we, at times we'll feel anxious, we push reset, we go back to the peace of Christ. I felt some anxiety here today with, with all of you wonderful, safe people. <laughs> and it's like, okay, we're doing a, you know, a talk here, and it's like, oh, I'm starting to feel some pressure, and I get into my bill stuff, like, okay, I gotta be great or something. It's like, as soon as I feel it, it's like, no, I'm just one of five people on these couches, and best of all, Jesus is here, and I don't need to prove anything, and Lord, we're just participating in a conversation, and so I, I reset. But I, I had to accept that I would have that anxious feeling. If my habit was what it used to be, I gotta power through that. I gotta impress, I gotta perform, I gotta be the expert. Bill, you wrote a book on this, so you gotta be really good. Right, right. <laughs> Then, then I, it just generates more and more anxiety. Right. But if I get back in that easy yoke with Jesus, no, Jesus is the master teacher. Yeah. He's the Prince of Peace. And I got four wonderful friends here that got great things to say. We're just gonna be in a community now here and share with our friends on video. So good. And I'm relaxed. So good. How did you get to the point, and, and you guys can each answer this, but how did you get to the point where that was your default? Uh, well, I had spent a lot of hours in safe conversation with soul friends, counselors, Christy, people that listened to me and gave me empathy, tell me get understanding of all of the stuff of anxiety in me. And I have done a lot, over time, a lot of different spiritual disciplines that are emotionally honest. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a slow but steady course. And if you look at like the whole thing, it gets overwhelming, but if you just say, well, I'm going to do what I can today. So here's a, here's a concrete example. Christy mentioned scripture memory. In, in the year 2006, I was challenged by uh, one of our mentors, Dallas Willard, the power of memorizing scripture, not just verses, that's good, but even paragraphs and whole chapters. Yeah. And, and I was so compelled that that would be a good thing for my soul and my relationships and my Christ-likeness. I made a mark in my journal. 2006, starting today, I'm going to begin memorizing some paragraphs and chapters of Scripture. Wow. And just take them one at a time. Yeah. Go on long walks, long runs that I do anyway, but then just bring the Scripture with me on a little piece of paper, memorize it, and then use it as a pocket lighter to get me to pray. Mm -hmm. So all these years later, I've got dozens of chapters of Scripture memorized to pray when yeah. I'm laying in bed and I can't sleep, or I don't have the That's Bible cool. with me and I want to tune into God, yeah. or I don't know yeah. how to pray, and I turn to this particular Scripture passage. So you've hidden His Word in your heart is what you're saying. 
I love that. And you just do what you can today. You yeah. like, I mean, this week, if God put on your heart, you can memorize Philippians 4, 6 through, through maybe 9 or 10. Yeah. And you're going to get some teaching around anxiety and peace and contentment and prayer and thankfulness. You just memorize that or just memorize Psalm 23 or even just right. the Lord's Prayer. You probably already got that memorized. But now use it like that pocket lighter and experience the life that comes from God's Word. So cool. Then when you got one, you do another one. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think of what you mentioned Philippians 4, 6 through 9 or 10. And in Philippians 8, it talks about things to think about, things that are pure, yep. true, lovely, noble, admirable. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at this, but I find myself thinking of things that are the opposites of those. And that is my natural sin nature bent. So I have to force myself to no, you know what? We're not going to go down this rabbit hole today. Yeah. We're not going to think about all the ugly. We're going to think about lovely today. And um, practicing gratitude really helps with that as well. Um, and it can reduce a lot of anxiety because you're choosing and you get control over your brain. Your brain doesn't have to have control over you. Um, and you get to choose, okay, today I am going to purposely, even if I think it, even if I feel it, I'm going to push that away and I'm going to think on the things that God wants me to think about today. And it's a challenge, but that's also another way that I find um, helpful when I'm really, really struggling. That's good. Um, Kyle, you and Brittany have journeyed through hard seasons with Andrew and I, and I'm even reflecting now on some scriptures that we had memorized. And when I think about those things and I, I feel that, that hurt and that sadness and even that fear, you know, my brain goes right to that scripture. And it's so comforting. And I can say it slow and I can breathe as I do it. And I, for that moment, it's like, okay. This is good. And then also those conversations. I mean, we pursued hanging out with you guys and yeah. so many other people who are so safe yeah. um, and so good to us. And, and being, to, being able to be honest. I think all of us can empathize with how hard it is to sit with someone, God or anyone, to say, I feel shameful, I feel inadequate, I feel scared, I feel like a mess. And, and to do that and to receive what we need in that place is so important. And, and that's really been the most fruitful thing, I feel like, for me. Yeah. And I would say there are times when I just have too much anxiety in my body to even do that. And so I have to do something. I have to start, yeah. I have to go work out first. Okay. And then after I work out, then I can go and get that time with the Lord, or then I can start to get in touch and journal, or I could come back and say, Bill, do you have it to listen to me? I'm getting in touch with a lot of emotions and, you know, or, or make an appointment with my spiritual director or therapist sure. to, to be able to do that. But sometimes in the moment, you just have to do something to kind of care mm -hmm. for your body. And yes. for, for some people that I've worked with over the years, it's been, they've actually needed an anti-anxiety medication for a period of time in order to make use of the therapy. Mm -hmm. That's good. So the, the tagline of our, of our series, Stop the Spiral, is disciplining your mind in a world of anxiety. Because I really do feel like the world is is hyped on this this thought that oh now I they almost wear it like a badge like I am anxious I have anxiety yeah. it's almost this thing to brag about now um, and what I'm finding in my own studying and even in talking with you guys is it really is all about disciplining yourself in your spiritual walk and and I would say there's even a very large physical aspect of this each of you have touched on feeling it in your own body. Um, and then Bill, I know regularly, I'll get on Facebook and see your Insta or your Facebook lives as you're walking um, down your green belt or, or doing other things. So I'm curious, like, what are some, what role, I guess I should say, does physical activity play in your mental health? Well, a huge thing for me is just being in the beauty of God's creation, being in nature and, uh, you know, Beauty is, is God's goodness made manifest to us. And it just, it just washes over us if, if we're emotionally present and, and we let God minister to us through the, the sky and the trees and the flowers and the birds and, and whatever is natural that's outside, the sound of a running stream, a, a lake, uh, green grass that's growing, and yeah. just be with those aspects of God's creation and let God's beauty just wash over us. I mean, that is so good for our embodied souls. Our, our soul is embodied and our, our, our physical being needs to be in beauty. And so yeah. that's just really a very practical. I mean, during COVID-19, I'm outside every day, more than once, yeah. taking a walk or a jog or something just, just to be immersed in beauty. Yeah, yeah. 
it is crazy how much the the pandemic has colored this specific topic mm -hmm. for so many people. But do you guys have anything that you guys do on a regular basis, physical activity that helps your mental stability? Yeah, we, we walk every day, um, Andrew and I, and, and we really enjoy that together and try to take note of the flowers and the birds and those things that feel mm -hmm. um, really good. Another helpful question can be if, if you're feeling it in your body to ask, um, okay, what part am I feeling that in? And what is that part trying to tell me? If it's my, my heart, if it's my hands, if it's, you know, my stomach, what is that part of my body trying to tell me right now? Yeah. And giving it a voice. Mm -hmm. And maybe that'll help you get some of that language um, to That's help good. know what you need to work through. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Yeah, I, I walk pretty much every day as well, but I walk with my dog. So that doesn't help as much. <laughs> I'm busy managing him. Um, but something that does help me a lot is um, progressive muscle relaxation, which is going through every muscle group of your body one by one and purposely tensing it, holding that, noticing the tension for three to five seconds, and then slowly starting to release the tension purposely mm. and something that that helps with is if you don't know where in your body you're feeling it if you're not really connected or you're not good at identifying or you don't even like being in your body it's something that gets you very present and then when you purposely tense it up and relax it you let go of tension that you were holding previously that you might not be able to identify and that's been really helpful for me it's great right before you go to bed because um, it gets your whole body relaxed and then you can just do some really deep breathing and I love focusing on a scripture or imagining myself somewhere that I feel safe and alone and I can feel the presence of God that's really helpful for me and creating that s space of calm in my own mind and and knowing that God is there that he meets me right there um, and, and having that safety is is really wonderful so cool yeah so a comment here we're talking in this whole conversation a number of different as you said kyle uh, disciplines or tools or exercises that we're each expressing about how to deal with anxiety and these are very practical things we hope will be helpful for you who are listening but i want to just take a step back for just a moment and say okay those disciplines need to be put in the context of what hopefully you're hearing from us in, in, in our heart yes. and in our intimacy with god and in the the vision of life that's here because what we're in danger of doing is trying to muster up discipline, mm. right. muster up motivation right. to use these tools to get more peace. And that's not going to last. But if we have a vision, and let's just put it at, at the best place, in, in Jesus Christ yeah. and in his intimacy with the God he knows is Abba, and it. we see the way that Jesus does really difficult things, the way he encounters stress and injustice and conflict and fear and all these very challenging, overwhelming things, but he does it in a way that's relaxed. Yeah. Because Jesus is in the easy yoke of the Father. It's in the Matthew 11 passage, it's the Father and Son, intimacies and knowledge. And so we see the goodness and beauty of Jesus' life yeah. in, in the context of his love relationship with the Father and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And he, he's saying, now come with me, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn these unforced rhythms of grace. You can become like me. Yeah, you're not the son of God, it's not gonna be perfect. But you can learn from me, little by little, more and more, you can be more at peace. And when we get a vision like, I wanna be like that, or I wanna be like Kyle, I wanna be like my pastor. Look, he's, he's leaning into this whole topic of anxiety and he, he's admitting, yeah, he's had some struggles with anxiety too. And here's some people that he's talked to that have helped him, I wanna be on that path like him. That's the power for you who are listening, it's that vision. Hmm. You need to be appetized with, wait a minute, there's a different way of doing life here. I don't have to live right. in this world of anxiety. Right. I can live in a different realm. It's called the Jesus realm, the kingdom of God, yeah. the kingdom of the heavens. It's so a good. spiritual reality that's not just in heaven when I die. It's, it's here and now through yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And this guy knows how to do it. And he doesn't have it perfect, perfected, but he's learning it. So I'm going to follow him yeah. as he so follows good. Jesus. Uh -huh. So good. Uh, well, we're, we're all disciples. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and we're all supposed to make disciples. So it's not just the pastor's role. We're pretty big on this. Like my, my role is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And if the work of the ministry is make disciples become like Christ, then it's everyone's responsibility to do that very thing. Um, 
I think the, the church needs to step up, and I, I'm so glad we're having this conversation mm -hmm. to make that possible, to let the church step up, to let them in on some of the language, and also to break down some of the stigma behind therapy and counseling, and, and uh, it's okay to pay attention to your body when it comes to your faith. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is. Britt and I are trying to walk as much as we can, and we obviously have Levi, so we take him with us. Um, and unlike a puppy, Levi is actually very helpful <laughs> to notice the things that I wouldn't, mm -hmm. right? So he's going to notice the flowers that I wouldn't. I can walk by because I can get so in my head sometimes and, and Levi's like reaching out for it. Like that's the most important thing to me right now. I have to have that. Um, and to be reminded that that's, that's the beauty that God has put us in is so good. Okay, so I have one final thing that I want to do with you guys. A couple of years ago, I had the honor and the privilege to go into um, Bill and Christy's home and hear from them on what breath prayers are. And it's been such a huge help in my own personal walk. And so I have asked them if they would lead us, teach us a breath prayer. Specifically, if we can, I'd like to request uh, the, the Psalm 4610 uh, version of, of this breath prayer. But this has been such a huge help in my personal walk, being able to to invite Christ into the moment with me, which we have discovered in this series that being present with God is the only way that he can actually be experienced. He can be remembered in the past and, and anticipated or expected in the future, but only experienced in the present. Um, and so would you guys help us with this? Would you walk us through this? Yeah, that's a great passage. It is an appropriate passage for right now because yeah. Psalm 46 is talking about, you know, not being afraid that the earth has fallen into the seas and the mountains quake yeah. and the oceans tremble and all this turmoil and the desolations upon the earth and nations are in war and it talks about reorienting to God. He's the one. He breaks the bow. He shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. And amidst this powerful God, then we're given this this breath prayer that you're referencing, be still and know that I am God. And so we have found to pray that phrase in the, in the whole of the psalm, it can actually remind us of the whole psalm, the whole of the kingdom of God that's mm -hmm. available for us amidst all the, the anxiety and the temptation to that. And so Bill, why don't you lead in the, what we call a simplifying breath prayer. Yeah, simplifying, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through Psalm 4610 be still and know that I am God. Probably already got it memorized. We're going to go through it and we're going to, we're going to drop one or two words at a time to help you just breathe it in more and more deeply. And so this, this breath prayer uh, is a, a technique that's combining a, a basic thing that uh, a, a psychologist or uh, a teacher might teach you for calming down your body. We've talked a lot about our bodies and how when we are struggling with, with stress overload and anxiety, it gets in our bodies. So the, the, the treatment, the, the freedom, the peace that we need needs to also come into our bodies. And so the, the breathing prayer technique is a way of using our bodies and just doing deep breathing all by itself helps with anxiety. Because when we're anxious, our breathing is shallow. So even just now, just begin to pay attention to your breathing and just breathe in deeply. Breathe out. Just as you're listening to me, just keep doing that. Just... If you just begin to do that, you're going to feel yourself beginning to relax. You're going to feel yourself beginning to be more in the moment. And it's in the moment that we can appreciate God's presence. Now, if we add to the deep breathing a meditation on God's Word, now we're really into the power to come into God's peace. Mm -hmm. Especially when we do it with the background that Christy gave us, that the Psalm 46 gives us, that God is accepting that we have stress in our life. We have some anxiety. We have some fear. We don't need to be ashamed about that. We've been, all been talking about that. So we're now in this time of prayer, as we're breathing in and breathing out, as we begin to meditate on God's word, why are we doing this? Not to deny and negate our emotions of anxiety. No, to, to name them. To release our stress to our Abba Father. To get into that easy yoke with the Lord Jesus. 
good. To be breathing in sync with the Holy Spirit, who is living and breathing within each one of us, interceding for you right now with groans that are deeper than words. And so, thank you, Lord, we are in your presence. You are always with us. And just breathe that in. It's receiving your grace. Thank you. Breathing out, releasing our stress. Breathing in with gratitude. Breathing out anxiety. Breathing in, thank you, God. Breathing out, I'm trusting you, Lord. Now as you breathe in, let's take one long, slow, deep breath as we repeat to ourselves the word of the Lord. Breathing in, be still and know that I am God. And breathe out your stress. Breathing in, be still and know that I am. Breathing out the stress. Be still and know. Breathing out stress. Be still. Be. Yes, Lord. We want to learn to be with you. The I am, our God of peace. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us here in Psalm 46 that God Almighty is our tender Abba. Praise you, God. Amen. Amen. Wow. What a way to end the conversation. I want you guys to know I'm so grateful for each of you. Not just the influence that you have in my personal life, but now the influence that you have in our church, the influence that you have on the kingdom. Um, you guys each mean so much to, to Brittany and I and to Legacy Church. Um, can't thank you guys enough for being here and having this honest conversation with us. Um, I'd love to give you guys just a couple of seconds real quick to tell people where they can find uh, the resources that you guys have provided, be that blogs or, or websites, um, and how they can connect with you. So Bill and Christy, would you start us off with that? Yeah, so our ministry is Soul Shepherding, and uh, Kyle's actually going to send you a follow-up email that gives you an invitation to two of our free resources from our Soul Shepherding uh, ministry around anxiety. So one is Fear Not Bible Verses. It's a, sh a very short, uh, engaging Bible study around the fear knots in the Bible. And the other free resource is called Worry-Free Prayers, like the one we just did in uh, Psalm 46. And these are tools that can help you with your learning, because the main thing that really you need to do now is try something. <laughs> uh, you, you just try to breath prayer with us, try some other stuff and see how the Lord uses it to, to help you. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to go deeper, we've written a book, Your Best Life in Jesus' Easy Yoke. You can find that on our Soul Shepherding website or on Amazon, and that's all about bringing anxiety into discipleship with Jesus. And then we also have a blog. So we'd love to have you follow us and we'll send you a weekly, short, less than 500 word, just devotional on this life with Jesus and his kingdom and in his easy yoke. Is it challenging? This is not any one of the questions we discussed earlier. Is it challenging to write on such a lengthy topic in less than 500 words? Very. It is I a discipline. I can only imagine. Yes. I can only imagine. Yes. I've spent almost a lifetime learning to do that because yeah. I, I want 1,500 words, not 500. <laughs> yes. But we only got yes. so much attention span. So. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'll make this available to um, anyone in our church watching this. If you want a copy of their book, uh, the church will pay for it for you. We'll make sure you get a copy. Uh, we want to bless them. I know I've been blessed by it very much. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bree, go for it. Yeah, like I said, I work for this wonderful counseling center called SIFT Counseling. That's C-I-F-T Counseling. Um, we literally exist to serve the local church. That's kind of our motto. So um, if you would like to see someone at SIFT 
um, you can find us at siftcounseling.com and uh, my bio is there and, and everyone else that works there so we awesome. would love to have you yeah very cool and chills so I work in uh, private practice, so I'm kind of on my own, but I also have a collaboration of therapists that I work with in Tustin um, called Wellspring Psychological Associates. Um, their website is wellspringoc.com, and then my website is chelseafontaine, spelled fountain, dot com. <laughs> That's awesome. And I know you have a blog as well. Yeah, it's on the website. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, hey, really quick, before we go, um, I do want to give you the opportunity to partner with uh, this ministry. We take up an offering every single week, and it's part of our disciplines. It's part of our devotion to Christ. And uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for, for everyone who is sowing into this ministry. But we want to give you the, um, the ability to do that this morning. Uh, would you go to LegacyChurch.online slash give, and you could give an offering there. But hey, really quick, I just want to say one more time, thank you so much for all of your wisdom and for what you're doing for the kingdom of God. It is so incredible. Um, Legacy Church is better because of you guys. The kingdom is better because of what you're doing. So we're grateful for you. Thanks Let's pray. for what you're doing, putting the yeah. generations yeah. together, right? That's what you did right here. Yeah. Hey, this is what we, awesome. we this is what We, we do, thought man. we were the younger generation, but I guess not here, so. <laughs> well, that's all good. We're all, uh, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, so. That's awesome. All right, we'll pray and then we'll get out of here. Father, thank you so much for the wisdom that's been shared, for your word that has been dived into, um, and for the, the conversation that we just had. I, I pray that it would help people, that people, when they feel um, anxious, that I, when I feel anxious, would be reminded or triggered in a good way of something that you said in this conversation. Father, I pray that you would uh, bless our church, bless these people. Thank you for being here, and thank you for those who have given in the offering. God, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for all these things. In your wonderful and holy name, amen. Amen. Hey, so grateful for you. I want you to know directly from me, I am praying for you. We are praying for you. We love you, and we'll see you here next week.